Hello everyone and welcome to this new full game walkthrough of Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire. I wanted to go over a couple of things before we get started. The first thing I wanted to mention was I tried making a let's play of this game and I was met with a lot of frustration because I realized I don't like making videos about something I don't know much about. So that brings us back to this series. So I went through and beat the game. It took me roughly 60 hours to do so. Uh, this series will be a guide slash walkthrough for anyone wanting to follow along while they play or if you don't have the game and you are interested in more depth than your typical playthrough, this is definitely the series for you. Now that I know how the game flows in the story and where the pitfalls are with certain quests, I feel a lot better about presenting these videos to you. I also wanted to mention that I am going to skip reading the scene details during conversations to uh, also speed up progress. I will let the voice actors finish their dialogue and read my options, but skip everything else. Now would be a good time to mention one of my goals for the series, and that is to make a quest specific episodes, which is more work on my part, but I want to try it out because I feel some people just want to see a specific quest and the process for that quest, and that's it. Um, I will keep the playthrough episodes intact, but speed them up as much as possible while retaining the important information that you need. I'm also going to skip the introduction, which is a cutscene describing the events that happen before we start the game. Uh, it just shows a statue made of Audra coming out of the ground from beneath your castle from the first game and destroying it in the process and then cl claiming a portion of your soul, nearly killing you. Uh, you learn more about that in the beginning when you talk with Bereth. Okay, so let's get started with a new game and we're going to use the new game plus feature called Bereth's Blessings. Uh, if you unlock achievements, you gain the ability to kind of speed up your early game progress. Okay, so on to the blessings. I have uh, only unlocked 67 points so far, and I believe the total is 82. And the purpose of these is to, like I said, speed up the early game mostly. You do get some uh, stats, some bonuses that you can retain throughout the entire game, which are very beneficial, especially later on. So in order to unlock all the points, you have to play through at least the second half of the game four different times to complete each of the faction's quest lines. Those are each achievements in their own. Uh, the final quests for all of the factions will require, well, they'll force you to choose a side. So you have to play through, choose a side, and then complete the final faction quests from then on. Uh, so it wouldn't take that much time, but there is a lot of investment early on too, and you do tend to make the other factions mad. Alright, so let's start with the uh, blessings that I'm going to choose. The first one I'm going to choose is the 50,000 coins starting off, which will let us get one of the bigger ships very early in the game, and we can also outfit it with better weapons to uh, increase our ship combat, and we can also spend money on adventurers if we want to as well. But really the main point of money in this game is the ships. The second one I'm gonna get is the plus two to all stats. So it doesn't say plus two, but I've checked it out in game already, and you do get plus two to each stat. You start off with, instead of 10 as the baseline, 12 will be the baseline now. And I'll talk about that more when we get into character creation. The next one we're gonna look at is begin the game at a higher level, which is level 4. Uh, this just speeds up the game. Usually you'll be at level 4 once you complete uh, Port Mage, and so that's about 4 or 5 hours of gameplay. So this will definitely speed us up. Uh, the next one I'm going to get is the Stormwind Sail upgrade. And the Stormwind Sail upgrade is a unique upgrade. It doesn't give you a bonus to your sail health but it does give you the highest in-game combat speed and also the highest travel speed for any sail. Uh, you, you can get this sail in-game without getting this blessing, but you can't get it till later on, and it costs uh, about 12,000 gold. So you just save yourself a large amount of money there. So those are the main ones I would, I would get. Um, if you don't have the points, obviously, then you can't get those. Um, I would go with the other ones, like starting money. Uh, so, so we'll just talk about the other ones now, and then I'll pick the last couple of them with uh, the remaining time. So the first one I want to talk about is the 5,000 starting money. Definitely a good bonus and definitely is the cheapest or one of the cheapest that you can get uh, with the other one being 
a bonus skills for your class. So I would get this one if you are just starting off and you want to do a, a full playthrough with New Game Plus features. The next one here is the uh, Complete World Map Explored. This has its definite pros in the fact that you can see all the ships and where all the ships are in the game. And you can also see all the ports and it definitely speeds up travel, especially when you're starting off and you don't know exactly where the islands are. This will uh, help tremendously in travel time. I will pick this one. And the next one we talk about is this one, bonus skills. So you get a roughly five uh, skill bonuses per class. And these are things like, you know, bonus to alchemy and a bonus to metaphysics, stuff like that. So this gives you um, double the normal skill bonuses, so you can get four points. Definitely worth getting early game. But the other side of that is that you can actually pay somebody 3,000 gold and you can max out all your skill points in the end of the game. Although it does cost 3,000 gold and you only get two skill points per lesson. So uh, it's kind of a balance there. So roughly the cost of this would be uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of 6,000 gold since it doubles their normal skill bonuses. On to the fine equipment blessing. I'm not sure what you get from this, but I do know that you will replace all the items you get pretty early on, but you still can sell them. So the gold equivalent may be equal to these two, but other than that, I don't see it being that much beneficial than some of the other ones that you can choose. The next one is the ship captain. I will grab this one because this, uh, what an expert ship captain is, it's not hard to get this. Um, it just speeds up the time that it would take it, instead of having four or five ship battles to get you to the expert captain level. You start there and you build from there, just like starting at level four. The uh, same same benefit uh, saves you a couple hours of, of game time. The bonus of being an expert ship captain is you can get a jump on priority when you're in ship combat. Somebody has to go first, either you or your enemy. The higher level the ship captain, the higher chance they have of going first. It's not always guaranteed, but it's always a higher chance. And then the final one is a unique item vendor. This is uh, beneficial. I looked at this one and to see what they had. And the things to note is that they have uh, three legendary items and they have a bunch of uh, blue level items. So they have three yellow items, uh, nine or 10 blue items. They're all magic based. There is a cape that adds a deflection bonus and gives you the rogue ability escape. There's also a belt that adds a bonus to alchemy and will add a random potion to your quick slot at the start of combat, but removes it if the combat ends and you haven't used it. There's also gloves that add a bonus to dexterity, explosives, and arcana, and also boost up your mage's evocation spells. So all those are very good and they're actually very cheap. I believe the costliest one was around 3,000 gold and everything else was like one or two thousand gold and this vendor is I believe called well-traveled merchant and it's right in the middle of Port Mage next door to the uh, podium where you meet Clario the mayor so those are the bonuses or the blessings that you can pick I have one point left over which is fine all right so let's wrap this video up let's go back and I'm going to pick uh, Path of the Damned. I feel like I've conquered Veteran in the last playthrough, so I'm going to up the ante here. Play Path of the Damned. You get to see the hardest level of encounters that are possible. Uh, I think what it does is it uses uh, AI tactics like go for the healers and uh, kill the mages first. So I'm going to have to keep that in mind when I'm fighting. All right, so for the rest of the settings, Trial of Iron, I'm not going to use that just because I'm not sure if something might be bugged and I'm stuck with my game file being corrupted. That would be a really bad thing. Expert mode, uh, it's just a UI change and it disables the uh, ability to see the numbers behind your attacks. So I'm going to leave that... Um, off for now so I'll actually have the ability to see the numbers behind the text. Uh, level scaling 
So I'm going to leave this off for now because I've had some issues with this where the quest didn't show the correct level that I was at and it's because this, it kept scaling down the quest to match my level and so the enemies in the quest would be my level but I wasn't sure if the quest was you know a high XP gain or low XP gain. Alright so that is going to be it for this and this episode I'm going to wrap up. I'm going to make these short and sweet and the next one we're going to start with the beginning of the game, build our character, and then get to the beach. Well, thank you for watching this episode. I appreciate it, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.